welcome yet to another amazing week. This month has been all about glowing in the dark. To glow means to give out light without flame. It means to shine. This series is about letting go of all of our fears and letting Jesus fill our hearts with joy. God doesn't want anyone to live with a spirit of fear. He wants us to laugh and smile and play. He wants us to feel safe, knowing that He is in control and He will take care of us. I will tell you more, but first, let us pray. Eyes closed and head bowed. Our dear Heavenly Father, we can never thank you enough for the gift of life, which you have not withheld from us. Thank you for the breath of life that we still have. Thank you for your numerous blessings every day, every hour, every week. We say be exalted, O Lord, accept our thanksgiving in Jesus' name. Father, Lord, today we commit to these lessons into your hands. What you need us to get, what you need us to learn from today's teaching, we will not miss in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father, because we know there will be revelation from your word unto us in Jesus' mighty name. Amen.
week, we learned that people can be afraid of different things. You might even be shocked to learn that there is a fear of just about everything. Scientists have spent years studying and sorting all sorts of fears, and they have a name for every one of those fears. Arachnophobia is a fear of spiders. Aquaphobia is a fear of heights. Nomophobia, the fear of being without mobile phone coverage. <laughs> Some adults, I'm sure, are on this table. There are many things that scare us in this world. From thunderstorms to spiders to scary movies. <laughs> but we have a savior who is bigger and tougher than any fear you will ever have. Jesus is the Son of God and there is no scary situation too frightening for him. Jesus showed us that. We need not be afraid of anything. In the Bible story that is recorded in the book of Luke chapter 8 from verses 22 to 25, Jesus and his disciples got into a boat to cross the lake to the other side. And on the way, Jesus fell asleep. Then this big storm blew up on the lake and the boat began to fill with water. The disciples knew they were in danger. The fear the disciples had of the storm was very real and it was a very scary situation. So they went to Jesus and woke him up. Jesus got up and gave a command to the wind and the waves. You know what happened? The wind stopped and the waves ceased and the lake became calm as if nothing had happened. The disciples were afraid and amazed at the same time. They said to each other, what kind of man is this? He commands the wind and the water and they obey him. You know Jesus slept because he didn't fear the storm. He is God's son and there is no storm bigger than that. Jesus calmed the storm, demonstrating to the disciples and to us that we have nothing to fear. We can give our fears to Jesus and he will always calm the storm. So, whether you are afraid of the dark, of dogs or storms, remember, we have a savior who is bigger and tougher than any fear you will ever have. If you've missed any part of this series, there, you can catch up on these and many other awesome teachings on our YouTube page at Elevation NG. Just search for the Seeds playlist and you can thank me later. Our verse of the month is from the book of John, chapter 8, verse 12. It says, Jesus said, I am the light of the world. Whoever follows me will never walk in darkness but will have the light of life. Jesus was reassuring us with this verse that when we follow him, when we ask him to come into our hearts, when we ask him to be our forever friend, when we ask him to be our Lord and Savior, then we will never miss our way in the dark. We will have the light that gives life. We will not need to worry about anything anymore. Do you remember this flashlight from our first lesson in this series? Well, I seem to have a problem with it. This flashlight has run out of batteries. When I bought it new, it had fresh batteries and it worked great. See, in the dark, just fine. But now that the batteries are dead, I guess this is the end. I just have to throw it away and 
get a new one, right? No one will throw away a flashlight just because the batteries are dead. When the batteries run out, you get a new set of batteries. You start with new pairs of batteries and the flashlight is back to normal. Some people have a hard time forgiving themselves when they mess up. They think that God can't love them because they cannot do anything right and that God wants to throw them away. No, but just like this flashlight, God won't give up on us. He will restore us with his forgiveness and make us brand new again. In the last couple of weeks, we've talked about a lot of things that scare us. We've talked about spiders and thunderstorms. We've talked about worries and doubts that bother us. We've talked about scary movies and things that we fear are hiding in the darkness or under our beds. These things are scary to some people, but not to everyone. Today, we're going to talk about one thing that scares everyone. We're going to talk about when we mess up. When was the last time you messed up? When is the last time you willfully or accidentally did something you know you shouldn't do? Well, you don't have to raise your hands, but I'm guessing we've all been there at least once or twice in the past week. We played too rough and broke something in the living room. We got angry and said some words we shouldn't have. We let down a friend or broke a promise. I mean, probably we told a lie to get out of trouble or we behaved badly or just did something just silly. Messing up can be really terrifying. Let me put it this way. Would you rather go home this afternoon, open the door to your room, and see a wide-eyed monster staring back at you? Or would you rather go and face your dad and tell him that while playing football outside, you kicked the ball and broke the windshield of his brand new car? One man in the Bible, knew how frightening mess up could be. His name was Peter. Mess ups come in different shapes and sizes. One man in the Bible knew how frightening mess up could be. His name was Peter. Peter was one of the 12 disciples of Jesus and he had one of the most famous mess-ups in the Bible. When he had the chance to stand up for Jesus, he denied ever knowing him. Peter was one of Jesus' closest friends. It was the night Jesus was betrayed by Judas Iscariot. You remember him? Jesus was arrested after Judas showed the soldiers who Jesus was by kissing him on the cheek. As the soldiers took Jesus to the house of the high priest, Peter and another disciple followed them. When they got to the house of the high priest, there was a girl at the door of the house. The girl at the door said to Peter, Are you not one of the followers of that man that was just arrested? Peter answered, No, I am not. It was cold that night, so the servants and guards built a fire. Peter was standing with them, warming himself at the fire. When they asked him again, Are you not one of that man's followers? Peter denied it and said, No, I am not. One of the servants of the high priest was there in the courtyard where Peter stood. The servant said, I see you with him in the garden. And 
for the third time, Peter said it wasn't true. Just then, a rooster crowed. Earlier that night, Jesus had told Peter, before the night is over and the rooster crows, you will deny me three times. Peter thought, me? Never! Peter promised to follow Jesus anywhere, even to death. Peter was warned and he still messed up. He denied that he knew Jesus because he was afraid he would be arrested too. But that's not the end of the story. After Jesus died and rose again, Peter and Jesus would talk again. This is one of the most important passages in the Bible because it's the one that shows us that Jesus can forgive anyone no matter how bad we've messed up. Peter messed up. It wasn't an accident either. He knew what he was doing. He was warned it will happen. He did it three times, just as Jesus had said he would. If it's hard for us to face mom and dad when we mess up, it had to be incredibly hard for Peter to face Jesus. But what does Jesus say? He told Peter, feed my sheep. In other words, welcome back. I forgive you. Now it's time to get back to serving me. Jesus knows that we mess up. He knows we will always stumble and always mess up. He gave us this moment with Peter to show us that no matter how much we mess up, we don't have to be afraid. We can be forgiven, just like Peter. The truth is, Jesus isn't the one who has a hard time forgiving when we mess up. The person who has a hard time forgiving is you. We beat ourselves up all over because we mess up. And when we've really done something bad, most times, everyone else will forgive us long before we forgive ourselves. Telling Jesus we are sorry and asking him to forgive us is the first step to finding that forgiveness. When we realize that Jesus still loves us, that we are still his children, we can begin to forgive ourselves. We can get back to feeding God's sheep and loving others. You know a great way to do that? It is to forgive other people. When someone does something that hurts you on purpose or by accident, forgive him, forgive her. When they ask you why, tell them about Peter and Jesus on the beach. Tell them that Jesus loves them and will always forgive them. Tell them that you are forgiving them because you have been forgiven too. Messing up is human. It's what we do. It doesn't have to be scary. When you mess up, remember that Jesus loves you. Ask Jesus to forgive you. Ask him to help you to forgive yourself. And when somebody else messes up, be quick to forgive that person too. In this way, we can all remind one another and show the world that Jesus loves mess ups. He loves us no matter what we have done. Okay? So, let us pray. Dear God, thank you for loving us even when we mess up. Thank you for the gift of forgiveness.
help us to always remember that nothing, not even our mess ups, can separate us from your love. As we ask you to forgive us for all our sins, please teach us to forgive others. In Jesus' name, Amen. Everyone messes up, but God is always faithful. Tell Jesus you're sorry and he will forgive you. Most people are afraid of failure, but we can always bounce back from problems, even the ones that we created, when we remember that Jesus loves us no matter what. His love is a bright light of courage shining into our darkest fears. Some people have written us to say that these teachings bless them and they would like to give an offering to God. The different ways by which you can give are now displayed. Please note that this is optional. God bless you as you give. Today we have learned that Jesus loves us even when we mess up. When someone does something that hurts us, whether on purpose or by accident, let's forgive him or her. When we mess up, we must learn to forgive ourselves also. Now, let us check out the quiz. Why did Peter deny knowing Jesus? Peter denied that he knew Jesus because he was afraid he would be arrested too. How many times did Peter deny Jesus? Peter denied Jesus three times. As soon as Peter denied Jesus a third time, the rooster crowed. True or false? True. will not love me anymore because I messed up. True or false? False. God loves you whether you mess up or not. Where is our memory verse from? Our memory verse is from the book of John chapter 8 verse 12 and it says Jesus said I am the light of the world whoever follows me will never walk in darkness but will have the light of life well done everyone how well did you do on the quiz this week Remember that Jesus loves you, even when you mess up. Make it a date with me next time. Bye for now and God bless you.